Okay, so in a previous video, we proved this fairly general theorem that we're gonna have an application of right here. So let's just go through it really quickly. So if we've got a continuous function whose Laplace transform exists, and we've got this second order non-homogeneous differential equation, ay double prime plus by prime plus cy equals f of t. We've got these initial conditions. y evaluated at zero is k zero. y prime evaluated at zero is k one. Then we know a solution. And the solution is of this form. So we have y equals k zero times y one plus k one times y two plus one over a and then the convolution of y two and f. And then also, y1 and y2 are solutions that's, that are solutions to the corresponding homogeneous differential equation, so the one where we replace f with zero, and furthermore, they satisfy these, these initial conditions. And that's really important for finding a solution in this case. If you look back at the previous video and the proof of this theorem, we... Uh, relied on this fact very heavily. So we have y1 evaluated at 0 is 1, y1 prime evaluated at 0 is 0, and then vice versa for y2. So you can think of this as like uh, an orthogonal um, Okay, so you can think of this as like an orthogonal basis of unit vectors for solutions to the corresponding homogeneous differential equation if you want to put it in the terms of linear algebra. Okay, great. So now let's look at this differential equation. So uh, we first want to find the homogeneous solutions. And that's fairly easy because the theory of homogeneous differential equations of this type isn't so bad. So that means we want to look at y double prime plus 3y prime plus 2y equals 0. We want to look at the corresponding polynomial. That's u squared plus 3u plus 2 equals 0. Notice that factors like u plus 2, u plus 1, which means we have roots u equals minus 2, u equals minus 1. Okay, fantastic. So that tells us that we have our homogeneous solution is some constant C1 times e to the minus t plus some constant C2 times e to the minus 2t. But now we can't just use this homogeneous solution. We need to mold it so that it satisfies these rules. So uh, let's do that. In other words, we want to find y1. So we'll do that by plugging in 0 into this, so we have yh evaluated at 0, so that's c1 plus c2, and we want that to be 1 for y1, and then we have yh prime evaluated at 0, that's going to be minus c1 minus 2 c2, and that needs to be equal to 0 for this condition to hold on y1. So there's a bunch of ways to solve this for C1 and C2. Um, I'll let you pick your uh, favorite, but maybe what I would do is I would add these equations and notice that the C1s are going to cancel and we're going to get minus C2 equals um, 1, which makes uh, C2 equal to negative 1. And then from that, we can see pretty easily that C1 will be equal to 2. So that gives us y1 will be equal to 2 e to the minus t minus e to the minus 2t. Okay, so there's our value for y1. And now let's do the same thing for y2. So we need to find y2. So we're going to impose a similar uh, system of equations, but now we need uh, the non-derivative to be 0 and the derivative to be 1. So let's see, we need yh of 0, which is c1 plus c2 to be 0, and yh prime of 0, which is minus c1 minus 2 c2 to be equal to 1. Again, I'm going to add the equations. <coughs> And that's going to give me minus C2 equals 1, which tells me that C2 equals negative 1, which tells me that C1 equals 1. Great. So I have Y2 equals e to the minus t plus e to the minus 2t. 
Okay, great. So now what I'm going to do, I'll clean up the board, and then after I clean up the board, I will move on with the rest of the solution. Okay, so on the previous board, we found these uh, functions y1 and y2, which are important to the solution via this theorem. So now notice from here, we can just go ahead and write down the solution. So notice that uh, y will be equal to k0 times y1, so we have k0, 2e to the minus t minus e to the minus 2t, plus k1 times y2, so that'll be e to the minus t plus e to the minus 2t, and then it's going to be plus 1 over a, and then this convolution. So we have plus 1 over a, but notice a is equal to 1 in this case, so we just have the convolution of y2 with f. Obviously we're doing f as an arbitrary function, so we can't calculate that explicitly, but um, let's write down a couple more steps here. So notice, uh, for the coefficient of e to the minus t, we'll get the following. So we have k1, and then we have uh, 2k0, so we have 2k0 plus k1. Great, and now let's look at uh, the coefficient of e to the minus 2t. Okay, so that is going to be minus k0 plus k1. So let's write that as k1 minus k0 because I don't like a hanging minus sign in front. Okay, and then what we'll do is plug this uh, value of y2 into this convolution, and then recall that the convolution is linear, so it splits up with addition, and now notice that's going to give us e to the minus t convolution f plus um, e to the minus 2t convolution f. Okay, great, and then I think this is a nice way to end the problem, although what we could do is also write this as follows. So this is the integral from 0 to t of e to the minus tau, and then f of t minus tau d tau. And then this one is plus the integral from 0 to t of e to the minus 2 tau, and then f of t minus tau d tau. But I don't know, that's a little bit longer and it doesn't seem quite as nice and succinct as the first line. So um, I'll leave it up to you which one you like better.